It's important to understand how to name chemical compounds because this gives you a lot of information about that compound. And just like people have formal names with a first and a last name, our ionic compounds also have a very specific way that we name them so that it is proper. Some of them also have nicknames, so like table salt or baking soda are nicknames that we give to ionic compounds. There are a international union of pure and applied chemists that decide on the method and how we name these compounds. And we call this and the method that they produce nomenclature. There's different rules for different types of compounds and it's going to be important for you to recognize which type of compound so that you know the proper rules for naming them. So when we're naming ionic compounds, we need to know it's ionic. And the way that we do that is it has a metal in it. So ionic compounds have metals. If it's a covalent compound, it's all non-metals. The first type of compounds that we're going to name are for ions that have a fixed charge. So what this means is that we know their charge and it doesn't change. This is for the metals in group one, group two, and aluminum. And we always name the metals first, followed by the non-metal. So the name of the metal, you just simply write down the name of the element. So in our example, we have Mg, so we write down the word magnesium. For the non-metal, which always comes second, we use the base name of the element, but change the ending to IDE. So this would be chlorine. And so the name gets changed from chlorine to chloride. So if we are naming MgCl2, it would be magnesium chloride because we know that magnesium is always a plus two charge. If there is a polyatomic ion present, and polyatomic ions are groups of elements that are covalently bonded to each other, but have an overall charge, and this charge does not change. So we still name the polyatomic ion, just using the name provided on the table. No special endings are needed. So an example, we have K3PO4. The PO4 is our polyatomic ion, and we'll see the table in just a minute, but we name potassium phosphate. So the PO4 is the phosphate part of our name. We can tell that it's polyatomic because the ending is different. It's not IDE. If we have ions that have variable charge, this is the transition metal. So in the shorter columns on the periodic table, we have to add a little more information to our name. So we include the charge of the metal using Roman numerals in parentheses. So if we have copper, which falls in the shorter columns in the periodic table in the middle, we would have to include the charge of the copper in a Roman numeral. How do we know what the charge is? Well, we look at the nonmetal it's attached to because there's only one chlorine that means, which has a negative one charge, that means our copper can only have a positive one charge because the charges need to balance. We do name our polyatomic ions differently than we do just the element by itself. If it is the element by itself, the ending is IDE. If it's a polyatomic ion, the ending is either eight, A-T-E, or I-T-E, ite. There are a couple exceptions to this. 
So one of those exceptions is hydroxide. Hydroxide, even though it's a polyatomic ion, ends in IDE. Another exception is ammonium. And the reason for this exception is because this is a positively charged polyatomic ion. And so these names are just a little bit different. All of the rest end in ITE or ATE. Try to name the following ionic compounds or write their formulas. Pause the video and determine the name or the formula. BA is in the second column of the periodic table. Barium, because it is in the second column, we know its charge and we don't need to include and shouldn't include a Roman numeral. CO3 is our anion. If we look in the table, CO3, its name is carbonate. Our next example, Li, is in the first column of the periodic table, so we know what its charge is. Again, no Roman numerals need to be included. So the name of Li is lithium. PO4, polyatomic, so we look in our table and see that its name is phosphate. Now we have a name, we wanna go the other direction. So sodium is Na, it's in the first column of the periodic table, so it's got a plus one charge. Sulfide, it ends in IDE, so it is not a polyatomic ion, it's just the element by itself. Sulfide is in column six has a negative two charge. So our formula is going to be Na2S to balance the charge to make a neutral compound. Calcium is in the second column of the periodic table. Our anion is Ate, so chlorate. So our Polyatomic ion is ClO3 with a negative one charge. So to make our formula, it is Ca, and we need parentheses because there's more than one polyatomic ion, ClO3, and the outside of the parentheses is the two. If we look at Fe on the periodic table, it is in the transition metals, so we do need to include the charge with the name. How do we figure out the charge? We look at the anion. So PO4 has a negative three charge. There is two of them. So overall, we have a negative six. That means we have to have a positive six for our metal because there's three of them. Each one is going to be a plus two charge. So in this case, we would have iron two phosphate for the name. Gold three, so we're told the charge. Gold is AU. We know it's a plus three charge. Chloride ends in IDE. So it's just the element by itself, falls in column seven, which is a negative one charge. And so we're gonna need three chlorides to balance the charge of the gold.